Hi, and welcome to another Complete 3D Concepts tutorial. My name is Josh, and in this four-part tutorial series, we've been taking an in-depth look at working with point clouds in the free version of Autodesk Recap. We have covered all stages of the process, from the user interface to importing the scan data, and then working with the scan data once you have it set up. During this series, I have spoken about all the tips, tricks and traps that we have found in our time working with point clouds in Recap, and in this, the last part of the series, we will look at setting up a point cloud with the view of taking it into Inventor or AutoCAD to work with. Due to the amount of information we have covered on this topic, we have broken the tutorial up into four episodes. You can find the other three episodes on our channel via the links in the description below, or you can click on the links on the screen now. In the coming weeks, we will post more tutorials on working with point clouds in Inventor, as well as some other programs, so if you would like to get those as they become available, don't forget to subscribe. In part one, we covered the importance of keeping Recap up to date, the current process of downloading and installing the latest version, the way the professional and free versions work after being installed, the user interface on the home screen of Recap, the settings dialog box, the process of setting up and opening both RCP and RCS files, and the dangers of using the Save As. In part two, we covered the process of importing non-native file formats into Recap, some of the differences in the file formats, and some things to be aware of when importing files. And in part three, we covered the navigation of the point cloud and the user interface while working with point clouds. Now, in this, the final tutorial in this series, we will look at tying all of this together and preparing a point cloud for use in Autodesk Inventor. While we will be going on to use the point cloud in Inventor, the same preparations can be done for use in AutoCAD, and with, to the best of my knowledge, some of this functionality also flows over into Revit. If you are revisiting this series to refresh your memory on something, each of the videos have some timestamps in the description below to allow you to jump to the topic changes if you need to. With all that out of the way, Less talking, more catting. For this tutorial, we'll be starting with a fresh copy of our imported data in our recap project. You can see in the project navigator, we have no regions, no view states, and no annotations set up. We also have our individual scan locations here, as this RCP was created off a PTX file, which means we also have real views and mirror balls. The first thing we want to consider is what we will be doing with the scan data. In the case of this particular job, we need to remodel a small bench seat that was on the side veranda when we did the scan job. We then need to populate the main hall with replicas of that bench seat. I also have to model and place some headstones in the adjoining graveyard that were under the church at the time of scanning. I will then be doing some renders of the project for use by our client. With all this in consideration, my first decision is do I want to move my origin or not? We covered this in depth in episode three if you would like to know more about the pros and cons. As I will be doing all the remodeling myself in Inventor and not bringing any models or any other information in from any of the other software that we have, I can safely move my origin point to help downstream processes. If you think you will be getting someone other than yourself to do any 3D modeling based off the point cloud you are working with, make sure you send them the point cloud with the updated origin point. For this job, as I only want to remodel one item off the point cloud, I will align the origin and axis to the item that I'm going to remodel to make my life as easy as possible in Inventor. We will talk more about this when we look at working with the point cloud in Inventor in a future tutorial. To make this process easier, we will create a limit box around the seat first. To change the origin, we go to Display Settings, then Points, then Update Origin. Click a point on the seat and press the tab to align the z-axis. In the case of any scan data we produce here at Complete 3D Concepts, we level our scans during the scanning process on site to ensure that the Z axis is always straight up, so we leave that one as it is. You can, though, select a surface if you think that will make it better. Hit Enter again to continue. We then click a flat surface and make the X axis perpendicular to that surface. In most industrial cases, you would be aligning your origin to a grid. So you would pick the face of a column that is on your grid and work to that. Something to keep in mind though is that these scanners get everything in super fine detail. So if the column you are aligning to is slightly twisted or bent, when you do the axis alignment it could put your point cloud on a slight angle that is almost impossible to see. 
when you go and model something in 50 meters away or more from your origin point that will mean that that item can be out by quite a long way in relation to the origin. If you need your data aligned to a grid it is far better to let your scan service provider know in, the, in advance and they can take steps to tie the scan data to the grid for you during the scanning and registration processes. In this instance, it isn't a critical factor, so I'm moving the origin point to make the modeling process easier and to show how it is done. Normally, I wouldn't bother changing the origin point at all. Now that we've moved the origin, we can start prepping the point cloud. If you want to see more on using the features you are about to see for manipulation of the point cloud, check out episode 3 in this series where we cover them in depth. The first step in preparing the point cloud is to always break it down into some separate regions to make it easier to work with in Inventor and AutoCAD. These regions can be seen in the point cloud navigator in both programs and make working with large data sets much easier if done well. Typically, I put all the excess data that I won't be using for modelling on a separate region. So everything outside of the church and the graveyard can go. Best practices dictate that you don't delete this data on the off chance that something in the scope of work changes and you do need it to recall it quickly. It also means it's available in other programs where I may want to use it. The easiest way to do this is to look in plan view and window select the points. So one window to get all of this, then hold shift, window select to get this, another shift and window to get the last bits. I give the region a meaningful name like excess so I know what's on that region and turn it off so I don't accidentally select these points again when doing other regions. I'll also do a quick rotate to get rid of these trees and stuff. I don't need to see all of that while modelling. The more I can hide, the faster Inventor will work for me later. What I'm left with now is the church and the graveyard. I don't need to see both at once, so I'll put the graveyard on its own region and then turn it off as well. I need to remodel one of these bench seats, so I'll quickly isolate and put it on its own region. Again, give the region a meaningful name, don't overthink it, and turn it off. While I have this isolated, I will just save the view state, and that way I can come back to it if I need to. Now we reset our limit box to show the rest of the church. What I'll do here is quickly put all of the church on one region, then isolate the main hall, and put the bit I need to work with on its own region.
As you can see here, this process can sometimes be a little bit painful and tricky, but stick with it as it only has to be done once. If you find you need to add more regions once you start working in Inventor, you can come back and add them later. Once I'm happy with the regions I have, I usually make sure I don't have any, any unassigned points, so I will put these ones in the excess points layer as well, as I don't really need them for modelling either. There is a risk when breaking up large point clouds that you can create too many regions and it will slow recap down as you can see happening here. If the blue wheel here takes much more than 20 to 30 seconds to disappear, you are starting to push recaps limits and it will only get slower as you do more to it. When you get to recaps limits, you have a few options. You can either simplify the regions, remove some regions or export your regions as their own RCS files and re-import them into a new project. For a job this small, I would normally take the point cloud into Inventor now. This has enough regions that I can work with the point cloud as it is, with a reasonable speed to Inventor. However, if I was working on a bigger or more complex job, I would look at breaking this point cloud up a little further and making it even easier to work with by exporting each region as its own RCS file and then re-importing them into another RCP file. Exporting your regions will clean out a lot of information from your scan data and make recap work a lot easier and faster. I wouldn't normally do this on a job this small like I say, but for the purposes of this exercise I will do it to show you how it works as this can be very handy workflow for bigger and more complex projects. When exporting to an RCS file, recap will export whatever points you have visible on the screen at the time. So now that we have the point cloud broken into different regions, we can just turn the regions on one at a time and then go to Home, Export, change the export type to Unified RCS, give the file a meaningful name. I normally use the same name as the region because I'm not very original and it saves me thinking about it too much, but also because these names will appear in the scan names in the project navigator when they are re-imported and this will be important later in Inventor. So make sure the scan names you use here make sense, it will make your life a lot easier when working in Inventor. Recap now asks if you are sure you want to do this and tells you the result will be a single unified scan. This is fine as this is what you want and it will reduce the information in your RCS file making the file smaller and faster to work with. Under unified settings here there is a refined grid slider. This is also known as decimation. I won't go into the details of this but it is basically reducing the points in the cloud to a spacing of approximately what you see in the box here. For remodeling purposes, anywhere between 6 and 12 millimeters is normally good enough. If you just need the point cloud as a rough reference and don't need to see a great amount of detail in it, a decimation of 25 millimeters is usually pretty good for performance and detail. I probably wouldn't go any higher than that though. I then have to repeat this process for all the other regions that I want in the new RCP file. As I only need the main hall, the seat and the graveyard to do my modelling in Inventor, I will just do these regions in the interest of keeping things fast and easy. I should also mention here that the higher this number, the longer this process will take. If you are working with a point cloud that has been imported from a PTX like I am here, it is likely that it has not been decimated previously and this process will take a long time. Recap isn't great at this and will be slow but this will get you out of a bind if you need to do it yourself. If you find you need to decimate your point cloud to make it easier to work with, talk to your scan service provider and see if they can provide you with an already decimated point cloud as their software is usually better and faster at decimation. Then set the slider to 1 when doing the export for the fastest results. We normally provide our clients with a full point cloud and a decimated one, so if you are working with our data sets and want to follow this workflow, use the decimated point cloud, it will be much quicker. And by the magic of YouTube, I have now completed that process and I'm ready to bring these back into another RCP file. So going through the same process as in episode 1 of the series, I have brought my scans back in and all I have to do is hit the launch project. As you can see here, there is now only three areas I am interested in for working in Inventor in my recap project. Over here in the Project Navigator, I also now only have three scans named as per the region naming previously. The importance of this will become evident when we start working in Inventor later. And that brings us to the end of our fourth and final episode in this series. Remember, you can find the links to other episodes in this series in the description below.
In the next tutorial series, we will be taking our scans into Inventor to work with. We will cover some workflows and best practices that we use here at Complete3D Concepts to do our modelling in Inventor, as well as some tips and tricks to help you achieve the best results possible. If you like what you have seen here, please don't forget to click the like button below to let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to be among the first to get more tutorials and the next series of working with Inventor. If you have any questions about what you have seen in this video or any of our other videos, please feel free to post them in the comments below and we will try and answer them as fast as we can. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.